Good morning. Welcome back to Study the Bible in One Year. My name is Janice. Uh, we are on 2 Kings 22, 2 Kings chapter 22, and we are on July 3rd class. So if you're watching this, this is for July um, 3rd. Uh, 2 Kings 22, uh, ver beginning at verse 3 to 2330. Acts. Acts 21, beginning at 37. Okay, this one is going to be a little rushed because <laughs> I've been up since around four. I did a video, I was editing it, and it was giving me such a hard time, and then I accidentally deleted it. So you know what? I just it just came to me. It wasn't meant for me to share, but just know I'm praying for you. Um, two nights in a row, the Lord woke me up, and He said, "Ask, seek, and uh, knock. Ask, and it shall be given unto you." From Matthew chapter seven, seven. And so I did a whole video about asking, seeking, and uh, knocking, and how Solomon prayed for wisdom. And I'm praying that God will give me the wisdom to ask for what it is that He needs me to ask for, because I I know to my knowledge, I'm praying and believing God for so much stuff. Okay. And if there's something that you need to believe and ask God for, then he is waiting for you to come ask, seek, and knock. I prayed for you. I called your name out. If you've been a regular on my channel, know that I call your name out to the Lord. And so it just came to me that maybe wasn't meant for me to share that video because I've never, ever, ever accidentally deleted a video. And I've been on YouTube for over a year. And I've never accidentally deleted the video. I can't find it, okay? I, I was trying to edit it. It was giving me a hard time. I did three or four times, and I even asked my husband. I said, Mike, I think I accidentally deleted the video. And it just came to me. Just Maybe it just wasn't meant for me to share um, um, on YouTube, okay? Maybe it was just something for me to pray to God about and to pray for you. But no, if you are a regular on my show, I did call your name out to the Lord and I'm believing God for you. So this video is going to be a little bit rushed because I am behind this in actuality. Today is July the 8th, but we are on July 3rd lesson. So I'm going to try to do two or three lessons a day. I am still on vacation. I am loving being off. Uh, as you can tell, I am working behind the scenes. I even look well rested. Okay. <laughs> And even though I sit here and talk, it takes a lot, especially on live. You takes a lot. I'm on live for two or three hours for one lesson. Then I have to interact with you guys. So it does take a lot. So I'm still on vacation, but I am working behind the scenes so that we don't fall behind. Okay. Second Kings chapter 22. We're going to begin here because I want to see uh, what happened with this. Um, with this this new king. Okay. So second Kings 22 uh, verse three in the 18th year of his reign, King Huz Josiah, I love King Josiah. And if one of my other lessons, I mixed him up with King Joash. Okay. So there's a difference between Joash, J O A S and Josiah, J O O S I A. And so I was mixing them up. So this king in the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah, Send Shaphan, son of Azaliah, the grandson of Meshul, and the court secretary to the temple of the Lord. So he became king when he was eight, I believe. Go to Hilkiah, the high priest, and have him count the money the gatekeepers have collected from the people for the Lord's temple. And trust this money to the men assigned to supervise the restoration of the Lord's temple. Then they can use it to pay workers to repair the temple. So when he became king, the temple was still torn down. And I said here in uh first second samuel first second kings first and second chronicles it's the, it's the story is being told from the king's perspective and when we get to the prophets isaiah jeremiah daniel um ezekiel I, oh that's the one i was i was forgetting there's four major prophets there is uh, the prophet Isaiah, he is known as the eagle's eyes prophet. He was able to see in the future and see the 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 death, the birth, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord's uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. His book has six to six chapters. The book of Isaiah is also representative of the Bible because the Bible has six to six books. Isaiah has six to six chapters. He is the eagle's eyes prophet. And then you have Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel, I can't remember what kind of prophet he was. Ezekiel, I can't remember. Then you have Jeremiah. He became the prophet. The Lord called him when he was 17 years old. He is known as the weeping prophet. And then you have the uh, prophet uh, Daniel. So there's four major books. Prophet uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. Daniel is known as the messianic prophet. He... His prophecy is significant for the time we are living in. I can't remember what Ezekiel is, but I'll look it up for you, okay? 
So this is King jo jo Josiah. And so he said, verse five in second Kings 22, entrust this money to the men assigned to supervise the restoration of the Lord's temple. Then they can use it to pay workers to repair the temple. They will need to hire carpenters, builders, and masons also have them buy the timber and finished stone needed to repair the temple, but don't require the construction supervision supervisors to keep account of the money they receive for they are honest and trustworthy men hilkai the high priest said to chef and the court secretary i have found the book of the law in the lord's temple then hilkai gave the scroll to chef and, and he read it now this is this is significant he said he found the book of the law in the lord's temple so what that mean they had lost the the scroll nobody was reading the bible <laughs> bible in our days okay of my brown sugar sure my husband tells me i'm his brown sugar yes Shaphan went to the king and reported your officials have turned over the money collected at the temple of the lord to the workers and supervisors at the temple Shaphan also told the king hilkai the priest has given me a scroll so Shaphan re read it to the king when the king heard that what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes and in despair. Then he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Achim, son of Shephan, Akabar, son of Milkiah, Shephan, the court secretary, and Isaiah, the king's personal advisor, go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people for all of Judah. Inquire about the words written in the scroll. This is why I love him, okay? That has been found, found. When you find something, what that means? It was lost, right? For the Lord's great anger is burning against us because our ancestors have not obeyed the words in the scroll. We have not been doing everything it says uh, we must do. So Hilkiah the priest, Ayakim, Akabar, Shephan, and Esaiah went to the new quarter of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Huldah. She was the wife of Shulam, son of Tiv. Tikva, son of Harhas, the keeper of the wardrobe. So there we see that God had a woman who was a prophet. You know, a lot of people think women shouldn't be preaching and prophesying teaching, but here it is, this woman as a prophet. And of course, we read about Deborah, 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 who was a judge over Israel. Verse 15 of 2 Kings chapter 22. So, he'll, so she said to them, the Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Go back and tell the man who sent you. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this city and its people. All the words written in the scroll that the king of Judah has read will come true. For the people have abandoned me and offended sacrifices to pagan gods and offered sacrifices to pagan gods. And I am very angry with them for everything they have done. My anger will burn against this place and it will not be quenched. But go to the king of Judah who sent you to seek the Lord and tell him, this is the word, the Lord, the God of Israel uh, says concerning the message you have just read. You were sorry and humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard that I, what I said against the city and its people, that this land would be cursed and, and become desolate. You tore your clothing in despair and wept before me in repentance. And I have indeed heard you, says the Lord. So I will not send the promised disaster until you have died and been buried in peace. You will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this city. So they took the message. Uh, they took her message back to her. So because see this is why we need to do what humble ourselves before god he said humble yourselves i think it just under the mighty hand of god and submit yourself to him and a lot of us pray and say god please humble me please humble me but in the scripture it says humble yourself so humility is something that we have to do we have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of god so the, the prophet is said to Josiah, because you humbled yourself and you obey, you were repentant, even though this prophetic word is going to come to pass, it will not come to pass uh, while you are king. You will die in peace and you will be buried unto your ancestors. Second Kings 23, Second Kings chapter 23, then the king summoned all the elders of Judah and Israel. And the king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the people of Judah and Jerusalem, along with the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. There the king read to them the entire book of the covenant uh, that had been found in the Lord's temple. There it is again, found. Okay, there's a problem that the word of the Lord is found in the temple. That means there was a read in it. Uh, the king took his place of authority beside the pillar and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. He pledged to obey the Lord by keeping all his commandments 
his commands, laws, and decrees uh, with all his heart and soul. In this way, he confirmed all the terms of the covenant uh, that were written in the scroll and all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. Then the king instructed Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second rank and the temple's gatekeepers to remove from the Lord's temple all the articles that were used to worship Baal, Asherah, Asherah and all the powers of heaven. The king had all these things burned outside Jerusalem on the terrace and Kidron Valley, and he carried the ashes away to Bethel. He did away with the adulterous priests who had been appointed by the previous kings of Judah, for they had offered sacrifices to the pagan shrines throughout Judah and even in the vicinity of Jerusalem. They had also offered sacrifices to Baal and to the sun, the moon, the con constellation, and to all the powers of the heavens, the king removed the Asherah pole from the Lord's temple and took it outside Jerusalem to the Kedron Valley, where he burned it. Then he grounded the ashes of the pole to dust and threw the dust over the graves of the people. He also tore down the living quarters of the male and female shrine prostitutes that were inside the temple of the Lord, where the women were coverings, rear coverings of Asherah pole. So you see all that this king did, this is why this stuff we see in this day, honey, it's not new. Read the Bible. I keep telling people, don't get all hip hop and emotional. Just read the scriptures, what the scriptures, all that prostitution, all that is in the Bible. So th this king, I mean, he was... He was like, uh-uh, we got to get rid of all of this stuff that is keeping us from having communion with God. I love that about this young king. Verse 8, Josiah brought to Jerusalem all the priests who were living in other towns of Judah. He also defiled the pagan shrines where they had offered sacrifice all the way from Geba to Beersheba. He destroyed the shrines at the entrance of the gate of Joshua the governor of Jerusalem. This gate was located to the left of the city gate as one enters the city. The priests who had served at, as, at the pagan shrines were not allowed to serve at the Lord's altar in Jerusalem, but they were allowed to eat unleavened bread with the other priests. So these priests who were came from the, the, the tribe of Aaron, who were supposed to be worshiping God and making sacrifices to God, were worshiping Baal and making sacrifices to the other to to the other little GODs. And Josiah, I love that about I love him. So even though they were worshipers of Baals, he didn't he didn't ban them from from what they were to, supposed to have uh, as priests. They were supposed to eat. They were supposed to be taken care of. But if they worship Baal, they say, no, you cannot come in the temple of the Lord to worship God. Because this is just me thinking, you might turn the people away from God because this is what you were supposed to be doing. You were supposed to uh, help the people to focus on God and, and worship the Lord. And here you are, as the example, worshiping Baal and the people's following you worship Baal, verse 10. Then the king of 2 Kings chapter 10, chapter 23, 2 Kings 23, verse 10. Then the king defiled the altar of Topeth in the valley of ben Benanim, so no one could ever again use it to sacrifice son of daughter in the fire as an orphan to Molech. He removed from the entrance of the Lord's temple the horses, statues of the former kings of Judah had dis decided to uh, dedicate to the sun god. They were near the quarters of Nathan, Melech, and Eunuch in office of the court. The king also burned the chariots dedicated to the sun. Josiah tore down the altars that the kings of Judah had built on the palace roof above the upper room of, of Ahaz, the king destroyed the altars that Manasseh had built in the two courtyards. Remember King Manasseh? He became king when he was young too, okay? Two courtyards of the Lord's temple. He smashed them to bits and scattered the pieces in the Kedron Valley. Valley. The king also des desecrated the pagan shrines east of Jerusalem to the south of the Mount of Cor Corruption where King Solomon of Israel had built shrines for Ashtaroth, the detestable goddess of the Sidonites, and for Chamos, the detestable god of the Moabites, and for Molech, the vile god of the Amorites. He smashed the sacred pillars and cut down the Asherah pole. Then he desert, desecrated these places by scattering human bones over them. So remember Solomon, he he have all these wives of different nationality and different gods. And so he, he to make them happy, Solomon built them cities and gave them their gods. And so Josiah said, no, we're not going to have that. We're going to tear it all down. 
tear it all down. And sometimes in our lives, honey, we just have to say, what is it that keeping me from getting close to God? What is it that hindering my worship and my fellowship with God and get rid of it? Okay. Verse 15, the king also tore down Bethel, altar at Bethel. Bethel is a place of worship. Remember Bethel, uh, where Jacob met God, the pagan shrines that Jeroboam, son of Nebuchadnezzar, had made when he caused Israel to sin. He burned down the shrines and ground to dust, and he burned the Asherah pole. Then Josiah turned around and noticed several tombs in the side of the hill. He ordered that the bones be brought out, and he burned them on the altar at Bethel to desecrate it. This happened just as the Lord had promised through the man of God when Jeroboam stood beside the altar at the at the festival so thank god for josiah then josiah turned and looked up at the tomb of the man of god who had predicted these things what is the monument over there josiah asked and the people of the town told him it is the tomb of the man of god who came from judah and predicted the very things that you have done this just done to the altar of bethel josiah replied leave it alone don't disturb his bones so they did not burn his bone or those of the old prophet from samaria then Josiah demolished all the buildings at the pagan shrines in the towns of Samaria, just as he had done at Bethel. They had been built by the various kings of Israel and had made the Lord very angry. He executed the priests of the pagan shrines on their own altars, and he turned human bones on the altars to desecrate. And finally, he returned to Jerusalem. Josiah was a plane. And sometimes we got to sit below and say, "What? Is, okay, what is it? I can be on social media for 10 hours. How many hours do I spend in the presence of God reading his word, studying the Bible? Why do you think study the Bible? Is? I would think study the Bible would have been grown by now. But people really don't want to study the Bible. They don't want to invest time in studying the Bible. And so that's why I thank God for those of you. And that's why I was praying early and calling out your names because you always support me. You are here. You're here on every video. Every time I do a live, you're here. And I, I really appreciate that. And I believe that God will mightily bless you. And I will never forget you. I mean, I know those people. If I, I was said in the video, if I don't see y'all in three days, I'm in your inbox like, hey, checking on you. You know, I give you three days because, you know, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. So I give you three days just in case you go away for a little weekend with your hubbyliciousness. Was well, Saturday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. If I don't see you, if I don't see you or hear from you by Monday, I'm like, hey girl, what's up? You all right? Because we never know. Okay. We're family here. Okay. Then Josiah looked up to him. Da, 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 da. Okay. Verse 18 of 2 Kings chapter 23. Josiah replied, leave it alone. Verse 19. Then Josiah demolished all the buildings of the pagan shrines in the towns of Samaria. Uh, he found return to... Okay, verse 21. I'm sorry. Verse 21. King Josiah then issued... Uh, I hate this thing that kind of pops up. King Josiah then issued this order to all the people. You must celebrate the Passover of the Lord your God as required in the book of the covenant. Can you believe that? Huh? Isn't that one of their biggest celebrations? And, and Josiah said that, oh, you must celebrate the festival, the, the Passover. Verse 22, there not had been a Passover celebration like this since the time when the judges ruled in Israel. Nor through all the years of the kings of Israel and Judah, but in the 18th year of King Josiah's reign, the Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. Verse 24, Josiah also got rid of the mediums and psychics. There you go. The household gods, the idols, and every other kind of detestable practice, both in Jerusalem and throughout the land of Judah. He did this in obedience to the laws written in the scroll that Hilkiah the priest had found in the Lord's temple. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses, and there has never been a king like him. Never been a king like him. Just never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses, and there was never been a king like him since. Not even David, because remember, David committed adultery. Solomon was great, but he was a wise fool. I don't know, remember who said it, but one of y'all say, one of you ladies say it. 
Verse 26, even so the Lord was very angry with Judah because of all the wicked things Manasseh had done to provoke him. For the Lord said, I will also banish Judah from my presence just as I have banished Israel, my God. Remember, Judah is through the Messiah. The Messiah came through Judah, and I will reject my chosen city of Jerusalem and temple where my name was honored. The rest of the events of Josiah ran his, uh, and his deeds are rec recorded in the book of uh, the history of the kings. While Josiah was king, Pharaoh king of Egypt, went to Euphrates River to help the king of Assyria. King Josiah and his army marched out to fight him, but King Necho killed him when they met at Megiddo. Josiah's officers took his body back in a chariot from Megiddo to Jerusalem and buried him in his own team. And the people of the land anointed Josiah, son Jehoaz, and made him the next king. I hate that good kings are killed and assassinated. I really hate that. You know, those good kings. And then the evil kings, the evil kings will live forever. Um... Uh, Jezebel, who was it that reigned for 55 years? Manasseh, are you kidding me? Like, I just hope that God, I just hope that God would have taken them out and let the good kings reign. You know, let the good kings reign and let the, let the, uh, let the dead ones go. Let the bad ones go. Okay, but no, like the the good. Why is the good king being assassinated? Lord, Darryl, this is the baby's information for school. You know, we're, he's going to private school. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen, y'all. We don't know what's going to happen with these kids in school. And I'm trying. <laughs> we already paid our registration fee, and then the first payment is coming back up, and we're like, well, what's going to happen? We don't know, but God is going to see us through it. Amen. God is going to see us through COVID, okay? He didn't bring us this far to leave us. And we pray for the soul of those who has who was snatched out by this demonic spirit. But this spirit, this is a demonic, it came, I, God said COVID came, excuse me, y'all, from the pits, underneath the pits of hell. But we bind that spirit, that demonic spirit, and take authority over it. Okay. Acts 21, Acts 21, as Paul, verse 37. Acts 21, verse 37. As Paul was about to be taken inside, he said to the commander, may I have a word with you? Do you know Greek? The commander asked, surprised, aren't you the Egyptian who led a rebellion some time ago and took 4,000 members of the assassins out into the desert? No, Paul replied, I am a Jew and a citizen of Tarsus uh, in Chilea, Sil Cilicia, which is an imported important city. Please let me talk to these people. The commander agreed. So Paul stood on the stairs and motioned to the people to be quiet. Soon as deep silence enveloped the crowd and he addressed them in their own language, Aramaic. Paul was a learned man. Okay, he just the just the type of man I would like. Smart, learned, well educated, well spoken, okay? And anointed. And save, save, save. Verse 22, chapter 22, Acts chapter 22. Brothers and esteemed fathers, Paul said, listen to me as I offer my defense. When they heard him speaking in their own language in silence, the silence was even greater. They didn't think he could speak in their own language. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, and I was brought up and educated in Jerusalem under Gamaliel. He is a Bible scholar. I need to look, look him up. Uh, Gamaliel. I said uh, Gamaliel. Amazon. Remember my Amazon store, guys. As his student, I was carefully trained in our Jewish laws and customs. I became very zealous to honor God in everything I did, just like all of you today. And I pers persecuted the followers of the way, who are the people of the way, hounding some to death, arresting both men and women and throwing them in prison. The high priest and the whole council of elders can testify that this is so, for I received letters from them to our Jewish brothers in Damascus, authorizing me to bring the followers of the way from there to Jerusalem in chains to be punished. As I was on the road, 
approaching Damascus about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shone, shone down around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the Nazarene, the one you are persecuting. The people with me saw the light, but didn't understand the voice speaking to me. I asked, what should I do, Lord? And the Lord told me, get up and go into Damascus, and there you will be told everything you are to do. I was blinded by the intense light and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companions. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man, deeply devout to the law and well regarded by all Jews of Damascus. He came and stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And that very moment, I could see. Let me back up. Ananias was a godly man, deeply devout to the law, well regarded uh, by the Jews. Single ladies. Then he told me, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear him speak. For you are to be his witness, telling everyone that you have seen and heard that what are you, what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. Okay, so Saul is telling the people this is what happened. Are we reading Psalms 1 again? Oh, we going back over Psalm 1? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're back at Psalm 1 again, okay? Because Psalm is 150. But that's what I was saying yesterday. I thought that was the last chapter in Psalm. Okay, well, we're back at Psalm 1. Okay, all the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked are stand around with sinners, are joined in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing their fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They all will be condemned. At the time of judgment, sinners will have no place among the godly, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. So there you go. You have to choose your path. Path of the godly, path of the wicked. Proverbs 18, 11. Proverbs 18, 11. The rich think of their wealth as a strong defense. They imagine it to be high wall of safety. Uh, haughtiness goes before destruction. Humility precedes honor. This does not mean you need to be poor and broke and busted and live paycheck to paycheck. This is saying, do not trust in your riches. Don't trust in it. The rich think of their wealth as a strong defense. Don't trust in it. God is our defense. All right, y'all, that's the lesson for today. I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off because, like I said, I recorded another video that was, that was um, I think I accidentally deleted it, so that means... My time is back, back, back. Watch this video for me. Run it. If you guys could run my playlist. My, I was checking my hours this week. It went like this. My hours is all the way down because I went from doing lives to I'm doing videos. So I need you guys to please run my playlist. You know, you're going to sleep at night. Just put it on the computer or on your phone and press run and run it all so that I can get my hours. I am trying to be monetized by next month. Now that I've taken a week off, I'm gonna have to add another week to it. Uh, so I'm thinking by August 31st, I need, I should be monetized. Um, I'm halfway there. Yes, I'm halfway there with my hours and my uh, my subscribers. So I need to be really, really working to be getting subscribers. I've been on vacation. I haven't even been uh, in the in the streams trying to get subscribers. So if you can run my playlist for me, that will help with my hours. I am also going to be re doing live watches on here from my show, Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight helped me to get my hours quick on my other channel. I had 2,000 hours in one month when I came on YouTube doing Married at First and I didn't even know it. So for the next couple of weeks, I will be doing Married at First Sight live watch on this channel so that I can, um, so that I can get my hours, even though I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight because I'm still on vacation from this channel. So I might just do it on Janice Hilton channel. All right. 
I absolutely love you. I adore you. Thank you for your love and support. I am praying for you. Just know, just know that Janice is praying for you, okay? You know, that's how somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. I'm so glad they prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. So I am praying for you. I love you. I appreciate your love. I appreciate the support. I don't take it lightly. I could not do it without you. I absolutely love and adore you. And I miss you guys. See you in the next one. Bye.